morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever that you are. I'm glad to be take active part in the STRIVE project. The topic is food waste and its sustainable consequence. Um, Dr. Robert Brenya, and thank you, Sean, for hosting me. We will go through introduction, how food get wasted, uh, sustainable consequence, the solutions to food waste, and conclusions. Food waste is food that can be eaten or recycled, uh, but woefully thrown out or discarded, uh, notwithstanding their cause. And statistics indicate that uh, 828 million people starved last year and food waste contributed to it. A study asserted that in the United States, uh, 30 to 50 percent of food goes to waste or is either lost or is either waste. And this makes it very difficult to achieve the sustainable development goal too. Uh, we have other goals that it also affect I'll explain that as we proceed. The question that we are asking is that how can a third of global food goes to waste, yet people experiencing hunger are everywhere? The, this presentation purpose is to elaborate on the consequence of wasting food via the households, the corporations, and the government. Uh, these three people play an active role as to how food goes to waste. Uh, food waste, on one hand, isn't a so only a social challenge. On the other, it's also a, an economic and environmental challenge. As we use uh, the cost involved in producing food, the cost in supply, the organic materials that we use, they all contribute to the income and to the environmental aspect. For example, in the landfill or the rotting food, it produces methane, which is equally a, a, a distraction to the climate change agenda. It's in line with the carbon dioxide that come out from our activities. So, what are the things that households do that causes food waste? One, they overproduce, they overcook, and they can't eat all. And the leftovers that come, they dispose it off. They fail to convert the food that they cannot be eating to either animal food or in other ways that can be served. On the side of the corporates, corporations, here, particularly the manufacturing industry, the food manufacturing industries and processing industries, when they are producing the food or when they are processing the food, and for example, let's say that they set 100 machines that are automatically producing and one of them, you know, gets spoiled. Instead of them to reset the whole system again, they let the process continue and one machine that has spoiled will continue to be classifying the food as waste, just like that. And this, in effect, generates a lot of food that has been wasted. Now, on the side of the government, how they contribute to food waste is that the government failed to initiate stricter policies policies that will prevent the households and the corporations, corporation industries to reduce the level of food that they waste. The government policies can direct them to recycle, reuse, and repurpose their food. But because of the failed policies, the households and the corporates do whatever that they want, and it all contributes to food waste. As I said earlier, the food that goes to the landfill gets rotten and causes pollution through air, through water, through soil. And these things are also in line, adding up to the greenhouse emissions that we are already experiencing. And the, all of these have a negative impact 
on the climate. The question is, with this uh, amount of food that is being wasted, can we achieve the sustainable development goals, the 17 sustainable development goals, or even some of them? Because the level of food waste affects the sustainable development goal too. It affects the 11, it affects 12, it affects 13. That is the hunger, the sustainable cities, responsible consumption, climate action, respectively. But it's not only these ones, it affects almost some of them, even uh, uh, our well being. Sustainable Development Goal 3, it affected because the water gets polluted, people drink, and it affected. So it affects almost all of the goals that have been set by the United Nations. The devastating consequence, the negative consequence, which is sustainable, if we are unable to solve this problem, it will continue to be there, is that it will affect the intergenerational inequity. It will bring intergenerational inequity because the resources that we are currently using is going to be diminished and our children and their children and their children and so on are going to be affected because of our inactions to control the level of food that is being wasted so the sustainable negative consequence lies on the inequity of intergenerational resources now how can we solve food waste or in what ways can we at least mitigate the negative impact one households can check their lifestyle how they waste food they can change it preserve food if the traditional method is not working they can use the mortar with the refrigeration they can measure the food that they eat they can reduce the level of production that they do they can repurpose some of their food Household can do this to mitigate their food waste. Another one is waste reduction policies from the government, stricter ones that will prevent households and the corporations from destroying food. With these policies, government can ensure and back it with the law that defaulters will be punished. And if people know they are going to be punished, they will be adhering to the policies that has been instituted by the government another very important point is that food surplus distribution we have institutions or non-governmental agencies can also help by setting up food banks that collect food from uh, people who are finished eating and the food is going to waste and redistribute to those who are in need because there are a lot of people who are in need of food but they don't have the money they don't have the resources to get the food that they need so the food banks can help in the redistribution of food. The last one, that is the research and development investment. Perhaps the most important is that government and non-governmental agencies can invest in research and development of how to control food waste. They can educate both the households and the cooperatives to, for them to recycle the food, for them to repurpose for them to reuse the foods that are being wasted. And with this education, most people will be aware about food waste and its impact in reducing hunger in the world. So household lifestyle, waste reduction policy, food surplus redistribution, and research and development policies are the ones that are going to at play an essential part in reducing food waste. In summary, we are saying that households can reduce food waste, cooperation can do, because food waste affects social, it affects economic, it affects environmental, and it affects everyone on earth. And that the incoming generations that are coming are going to be seriously be affected if we don't take active or rigorous actions to control it now. As stakeholders and listeners, this is what we can do. Before we can waste food, we must think twice about the consequence that is going to affect the generation that are coming. If we are going to waste food, think that what I'm doing now, or wasting this food, is it going to give an equal chance to the generation that are coming. 
let us think of the generations that are coming. Maintain the resources and ensure that we eat food, we measure them, then the ones that we cannot uh, eat or we cannot consume, we repurpose it or we recycle it for our animals and the like. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoy this discussion or this uh, presentation. I also thank Strive for giving me the opportunity to present this and thank Ben too for hosting me. Thank you very much. If you have any question, you can also ex you can text us or you can just email it to me, then I will just uh, reply you. Thank you very much. Stay blessed.